Uh, thank you, Miss Penny. <clears throat> well, if you have your Bibles, let me invite you to open them to Paul's Gospel of Philippians. Philippians chapter 3 this morning. Brand new year. New opportunities. Uh, new places to study in God's Word. This, I want to begin, we're going to begin a series on the church uh, is my plan. Thinking about the church and all the different things that God does in, in and through the church. And we're going to begin today with the, the thought about, as a church, a fresh start. I mean, that seems like be obvious with uh, uh, the new year. That's probably what everybody's preaching today. Uh, but we're going to do it as well. I'm in, in Philippians chapter 3 verse 12 is where we'll begin reading. If you found your place in God's Word, I invite you to stand. And we stand out of reverence and respect for the reading of the Word of God this morning as part of our worship service. Philippians 3.12 Not that I have already attained, or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, we are so grateful for uh, a new day. Lord, for your blessings of it. We thank you for the privilege of worship that we can gather as a church family today. And Lord, we thank you for... Uh, the year 2020 and how you took care of us and blessed us and, and watched out for us. And Lord, we look ahead to a brand new year, a new opportunity. And, and Father, I pray this morning that you challenge us. I pray, Lord, that we might realize that uh, uh, we get to start all over. Uh, beginning today, we, we can uh, live our lives committed to you, faithful to you, obedient uh, like never before. And so, Father, I pray today we'd make those commitments that that you would be first and foremost in our hearts and lives. So, Lord, speak to us. We ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I mean, you may be seated. Yeah, I, I've used this before, I know, but I, I just want to remind you about a golfer. We got Mr. Calvin back here. He's a good golfer. I ought to get him up here and, and show. Uh, you know, in golf, I tried playing golf years and years ago for about maybe two years. And boy, I, I was terrible. I just stunk at it and I just got aggravated and didn't enjoy it whatsoever. But one thing about golf, when you're playing with non-professionals, we ought to ask Calvin, he probably doesn't do this, but, but with the guys I played with, every once in a while you'd get a mulligan. Mr. Calvin, do you, do you play with a mulligan? you get one mulligan around? Oh, we get one every nine holes. Every nine holes, all right, two around, see? Well, what a mulligan is, if you don't know, it's like when you hit the ball off your tee and it, it like just goes somewhere crazy, you know? It doesn't go straight down the fairway. It goes where it's not supposed to go. And you say, oh, I want a mulligan for that one, and you get to do it again. You get to, try, you get to hit the ball again. Well, there's a lot of reasons why you might need, to, you might need that mulligan, though, you know. Uh, again, Calvin could tell much better than this, but like when, you're, when you're lined up to hit the ball, you got to keep your eyes on that ball. Keep your eyes off when you swing. You, you may hit it who knows where. If you don't swing exactly right, if you're... Your swing's not perfect. You don't hit it straight. You, you draw it or, or you slice it, they call it. A lot of reasons why you might need a mulligan, but it's a good thing to have a mulligan. Well, we're in the year 2021, and I don't know about you, but there's a lot of areas of my life where I need a mulligan. From the year 2020, there's some things that I should have done differently. There's some things that, that I wished I had done that I didn't do. Uh, we had months of quarantine. I mean, starting in March there for a month or two, we couldn't go anywhere. We couldn't do anything. What a perfect time to have spent with the Lord, to, to have spent studying and reading, reading more about Him, learning more about Him. And did you do that? You know, did you use that time to draw closer to Christ? Maybe you did. Maybe you need a mulligan as well. So this, this morning, I want us to start to think about a fresh start, a brand new beginning. We have a new year New commitments. Now, I'm not talking about New Year's resolutions. I'm talking about making commitments that I'm going to be faithful to Christ, live for Him. 21 is going to be much better as far as my walk with Christ than 2020 was. And I can make that commitment. Listen, you know, if you don't have any goals, you're not, you're, there's nothing to reach for. 
You know, if I don't, if I don't make a goal that I'm going to read my Bible every day, then I'm not going to do that. If I don't make a goal that I'm going to spend more time in prayer like we talked about last week, I'm not going to do it if that's not something on my heart and mind that I'm, that I'm going to plan to do. So this morning, God's going to lay something on your heart that you need to do better. That I need to do better. And I challenge you to listen as God speaks to you. And, 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 and make that commitment that, that I'm going to do this so that I can grow closer to the Lord. Well, how do we do that? How do we begin with a new year? How, how, can, I, how can I do so and, and be successful? Well, the first thing that Paul tells me in this passage of Scripture right here is, is I need to forget about the past. The things that I did or didn't do. The things that I failed. I, I need to forget about the past. And, and the way I forget about those, those things is, number one, is by finding forgiveness for uh, the things that I should have done or didn't do. Look at verse 13. Brethren, I do not count myself to apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Listen, there's some things in 2020 that, that we all want to forget. And I realize that. There's a lot of things that we wish, man, I don't want to ever live that again. But that's not what we're talking about this morning. I'm talking about there's things in your life that you should have done and you didn't do. You, you didn't spend time with Christ. You didn't start that, that quiet time like you thought you would do, perhaps. You didn't use your time wisely. You didn't witness to those people that God continued to speak to you about, and you just never did. Paul says, I need to forget about those things, those failures. You know, one of the things that prevents us from serving God is failures. We remember the times in the past where I messed up. We remember the times in the past where, where I, I wanted to do something and I never did it, so I just I quit trying completely. And Paul says, listen, I want to forget about all those failures. I want to forget about that, that, that time it, that God spoke to me and, and I knew I should have witnessed, but I didn't do it. I, I, I don't want to continue to dwell on my failures. Well, how do I get over it? Well, the very first thing I have to do is find forgiveness from God himself. If God has convicted me of, of an issue in my life, of, a, of something that I should be doing and I'm not doing, then I need to confess that. I need to come to God and say, Lord, you know what? You, you did tell me. You did convict me. You did show me things in my life that I should have been doing. And God, I never did do them. I, Lord, this morning I'm going to confess to you that I failed. I, I did not do that. You need to do that for two reasons. Number one, God requires us to confess our sins. In order for me to have that relationship with Him, I need to confess my sin. But I will never forgive myself if I don't first find forgiveness from God. And so whatever it is going on in your life, listen, I want you to know something. You need to, you need to get over the past failures. And you get over it by confessing that and by turning to God and say, Lord, you did, you did convict me about my prayer time. And God, I never did anything about it. Lord, I, I heard sermons about it. We studied about it in Sunday school. And I never did deal with it. Father, forgive me. And you need to do that today. You need to confess that sin. Whatever it may be, that, that refusing to witness, that refusing to be faithful, uh, that, that time of being lazy. Like I said, we had from March, April, May, three months for sure where we were all just staying home. Did you use that time to get closer to the Lord? Or did you just sit in front of the TV and watch TV the whole time? You see, that, that should have been a great time to draw closer to Christ. Did you do so? Well, I, I want to challenge you to, to, to ask God to forgive you of, of that sin. The Bible says, listen, in Ecclesiastes, that which has already been and what is to be has already been, and God requires an account of what is past. Well, God requires an account. He requires us to, to confess what we have done. Listen, Paul himself, the writer of Philippians, had many failures. Think about the Apostle Paul. What, what was, who was Saul of Tarsus before he became Paul the Apostle? Saul of Tarsus was, was one who persecuted the church of Christ. He, he stood there in, a, in, in approval of the, the martyr, the, the, the murder of Stephen. And, and just on and on we could list things that, that Saul of Tarsus did. But Saul of Tarsus 
had a new beginning. On the Damascus Road, he met Christ. He found forgiveness. He forgot about the past and he moved forward with what God had for him to do. And we can do that, church. We can, we can do that as a church. The Bible clearly tells me if I confess my sins, He is faithful and just to forgive me of those sins and to cleanse me of all unrighteousness. So in order for me to move forward in 21, I, I need to forget those past sins. In order to forget them, though, I have to find forgiveness for them. Forgiveness from God and forgiveness from myself. I have to forgive myself. I, I can't still, I can't refuse to make a new commitment because all I keep thinking, the devil's going to keep telling you, you never fulfill those commitments. Why do you do that for? Why do you keep telling God you're going to pray more when you really don't do it? Well, you can't listen to that. By the power of God, the strength of God, we're going to look at that in just a minute. You can do it. You can overcome. So forget the past sins, but here's something else that you've got to forget. And this is something that's going to sound crazy to you, but listen. You have to forget all your past successes as well. We cannot live in the past. We cannot live by the past successes. We cannot, cannot live constantly living in the glory of yesterday. Today is a brand new day. Today is a new day of challenges. Today is a new day of temptation. Tomorrow there will be new opportunities and we can't just constantly be looking back and saying, man, I remember when. You remember that revival we had back in 19 blah, 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 and, and there was 25 people saved and boy, that was a great time. You can't keep living in the past successes. We can't live in the past successes of, of, our, of our Bible schools. We've had some great Bible schools, and I hope we have some many more great Bible schools, but, but we can't just live in the past. Today is a brand new day, 2021. There, there's going to be ministry to be done, and it's going to be done different from what we've ever done before, perhaps. I mean, we're on Facebook. Never done that before. We have a YouTube channel, thanks to Stephen. We've never done that before. Trying to minister to people that can't come to church. Listen, 21 is going to be new opportunities, and we cannot continue to live in the past. And so let's forget the past. Let's forget those past sins. But we also, now we're, we're going to thank God for those successes, but we can't, we can't just live for those. They're yesterday. We've got brand new glories and brand new victories ahead of us. So stop living in the past. Stop focusing on the past. One of the problems that many, many, many churches have and have had, and Stephen has taught us this in church revitalization, is they live in the past. They, 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 they refuse to, to step up to 2021 to be, even become part of the 21st century. They want to do everything the way they used to do it and, and, and worship the way we used to worship. And there's nothing wrong with, with some of the things we do, but just like having cameras in, in the sanctuary. Who would have thought about that 50 years ago? But we just absolutely have to come to this place where we're allowing God change us and move us we can't live in the past all the time churches refuse to, to move forward and they die because they're still stuck in 1950 1940 or whatever it is whenever the heyday was we can't do that we have to move forward so stop forget the past I, I want to be everything Jesus wants me to be as a church, we want to be everything the Lord wants me to be. Well, let's, let's just quit dwelling on the past. Find forgiveness of sins. Thank God for victories, but, but they're yesterday. We're looking for new ones today. And that's the second thing. Listen, we have to focus on the future now. Stop living in the past. Focusing on the future. Verse 13 again. He says, Brethren, I do not count myself apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. God has great things for us in the 2021. Ahead of us, who knows what God might bless us with? Who knows what ministries might open up as a result of this coronavirus? As a result of us being on Facebook now? As a result of, uh, of all the new things that we're doing? We, we don't use hymn books. We have music on screens now. I, I mean, who knows what God might have for us? We have to focus on the, the, the future. 
Most commentators believe that Paul is referring in this little passage right here to a, a marathon runner running a race. And, and they're saying that, look, Paul, Paul is telling us that as a marathon runner, I, I can't be focused on the, the potholes and the ditches that I just went past. You know, I, I've got to keep my eyes forward because there's going to be a, another fence to jump or there's going to be a, a, another pothole to go around. There's going to be a, a, a group of runners that I'm going to have to figure out how to navigate through them. I, I've got to keep my eyes focused forward. And I also have to keep my eyes on that prize that's waiting for me. So he, he's given us a picture of a, of a runner in a race. And, and as a runner, I, I have to continue to look forward. I can't be looking back. I'll stumble and fall. And so Paul says here in verse 13, the second half of it, listen, I'm going to forget the things that are, which, are behind, which are behind me, and I'm looking forward to those things which are ahead. Those things are ahead. Listen, the, the events of life that are going on today is what I have to focus on. What, what God is doing in my life today, the people that are around me today, the people that are in hurting today, the opportunities God gives us today, those are what I'm looking forward to. Those are what I'm focusing on. How can we minister to people in the midst of coronavirus? How, how can we tell people about Jesus? Well, we've decided to, to put cameras in our sanctuary and, and put it on Facebook like everybody else is doing. But we're, we're trying to live in Today, focusing on the events, the things that are going on today. In, in the Oriental, uh, where Jesus grew up in that age, in that area, the, the shepherd, the Oriental shepherd is, is the term. Uh, the shepherd would always go before the flock. The flock followed the shepherd. And, and, and so anything that, that would come after the flock, any wolf or whatever, it, it had to get past the shepherd. Well, listen, we have this wonderful shepherd. His name is Jesus. And anything that we might face in life in 2021, it has to come past our shepherd to get to us. And so there's no reason to fear. There's no reason to be apprehensive. There's no reason to worry about 21. Yes, there's, there's a lot of uncertainties. There's no doubt about that. I mean, I preached on that last week. But, but understand, anything that's going to come at the church we have our shepherd standing in front of us, and he's ready to take care of it, to lead us and to guide us and to help us. And so instead of focusing on the past, I'm going to focus on the events of today. What's God doing today in my life? Who has God put in your life just recently, perhaps, that needs to be ministered to? That maybe just needs a friend. Maybe they just need somebody to listen to them. They, they, they've had a hard Christmas they lost a loved one to coronavirus in 2020. And maybe they're just now opening up to you. Maybe that's your ministry this year. Maybe that's what God is doing for you. So I've, I've got to, Lord, forgive me for failing you in 2020 in those areas. And then move on. I'm looking now for what God is doing now. What are the events in my life God has done that I can serve Him at in? In 2021. 20, but notice what else in that verse 13, 14. He says, look, I'm forgetting those things which are behind. I'm reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. The high calling. Listen, I've got to not only focus on today, the events of the day, but I've got some responsibilities in 2021. Paul says, I am responsible to be pressing forward to this high calling of God. What is the high calling of God for every single child of God? Not just the Apostle Paul, but every single one of us. What are we called to do? What are we called to be? We're called to be like Jesus. We're called to be being transformed into the likeness of Christ. I have a responsibility. I have a, a challenge. I have a calling from God himself, that I am to be working hard to be more like Jesus, this upward call, this high calling of God. In 2 Timothy, Paul writes, he says, listen, uh, this high calling, if you will, is a, is a holy calling. It's to be separated unto God, for God, for his glory, so that he can use me. 
And so I'm going to forget the past, the failures, and the good things. I, I'm thankful that God used me, but we're living in a brand new day today. And I'm going to live for today. I'm going to live for the events of the day, the people that God is putting around me today. But not only that, I have a responsibility to God that I am called to be transformed, renewed day by day by day into the likeness of the Lord Jesus Christ. And nobody else can do that for me. I have to do that myself. I'm the one responsible for my walk with the Lord. And I have that, that responsibility that I'm going to give an account. Paul would say in 2 Timothy at the, at, at the close of his life, I have fought a good fight. I have run my course. I finished my race. Paul could stand there, sit there, wherever he was at, at the end of his life looking back and say, I've been faithful. I did what God asked of me to do. I have been working hard to be become more and more like Jesus. In your life today, today is a brand new day, a brand new start, a brand new year. Man, 2021 can be the best year of your life, of your Christian life. I can make this commitment, Lord. I'm going to live for the events of today. I, I, I'm not going to live in, in yesterday. Thank you for those blessings, but God, we're in a brand new year, brand new day. I, I'm going to have my eyes open for events that I can serve you in today. But not only that, Lord, I understand that, that I have a responsibility. Paul said, verse 14, I press towards the goal. What's that goal? It's to be like Jesus. To be transformed into His image, into His likeness. That's the goal. Remember I told you at the beginning, if, if we don't set any goals, we certainly will not reach anything, will we? If, if, we don't, if, we've not, if we're not aiming high, we're certainly not going to reach high if we're not aiming there. So your challenge, my challenge for this year, as it is every single year, is to become more like Christ this year. When I look back on 2020, did I grow in my walk with Jesus? Did I become more like Jesus? If not, then Lord, please forgive me. And then forget that failure. 21 is, Lord, with your strength, with your power, with, with your uh, presence, I'm going to be more like Jesus this year. I'm going to grow. I'm going to get into the Word. I'm going to spend time with you. I'm going to pray and allow you to change me from the inside out. And Lord, I am going to be more like Christ. I'm going to fulfill my responsibility. You see, many times we don't, think, we don't even think about that, that, that I am called to grow up. Paul told the church at Corinth, listen, I, I can't give you meat. You're still infants, babes in Christ. All I can give you is milk. Paul was assuming that the church would be growing, and we should be too. So I'm not saying make a New Year's resolution. No, I'm saying make a commitment to Almighty God that this year is going to be better than last year. I am going to, to, to focus on the Lord Jesus. And I'm going to focus on becoming more and more like Him. I'm going to study His Word. I'm going to pray. I'm going to listen. I'm going to obey. I'm going to have my eyes open for those events that God puts in my life where I can serve Him with his help. And so, how do I become like Jesus in 2021? I, I'm going to forget that past, and I'm going to focus on today, the events of today, and, and I'm going to focus on fulfilling my responsibility to Almighty God. But listen, here's one more. kind of goes along the same way, but, but I'm going to look at verse 12 now. I'm going to do everything I can to fulfill my potential, what God would have me to be. Verse 12. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has laid hold of for me. Do you know to be satisfied with where you're at is the death of, of, of everything. We're constantly to be growing. We're constantly be, to be wanting new ways, new things, new, new experiences with the Lord Jesus. Never, ever ever become satisfied with where you're at in your walk with the Lord. 
God has, has great potential for you. There's things He wants to do in your life. And He wants to use you in this church and, and, and in your everyday job, everyday life. There's, there's much potential God has for you. Paul said, listen, not that I have reached it. I've, I've not apprehended it yet. I've not gotten there yet. Don't ever become satisfied with where you're at in your walk with the Lord Jesus. Now you may be, may be miles and miles ahead of me. You may be miles and miles ahead of anybody else in this church. Wonderful. But you still haven't reached your potential. God still has something else for you to learn. He has still more to, to make you like Christ. How does He do that? How do we do that? Well, I believe we find that in verse 10. You've got to go up. We haven't read that yet. Look at verse 10 of this chapter. That I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Paul says that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. Listen, there, there is a, a, a power from God that we, we very seldom experience. We very seldom know. This, this dynamic power that raised Christ from the, from the dead. It, it, it literally made a dead man alive. That same power is available for us. Paul believed that. How do I know? Just read a little bit more. Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I can do all things. Listen, there, there's the potential that God has for you. There's the potential God has for our church. We've not reached it yet. Listen, all those great Bible schools were wonderful, but that wasn't our, our peak. God has better things ahead of for us. He has, he has more opportunities if we will simply reach out for them. If we will strive to do that, strive to be obedient, strive to reach the goal that God has for us. I'll never do it in my own strength, but with the power of God, I can. You say, you know what? I've tried to pray before and I just, I just can't do it. Well, have you asked God to help you? In, in prayer, say, Lord, you know I, I've tried this so many times. And God, I keep failing. Lord, I need your strength. But don't do that just this morning. Do it every day. Make that go. Make that go. Aim high. Lord, I, I'm going to spend 20 minutes every morning with you. Aim high. 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever it is. Make it attainable. Don't make it so big that you can't do it. Put it on your calendar. Set your alarm clock 30 minutes early. Whatever it takes, prepare yourself for success and then Lord, I can't do this without you. I absolutely need your strength, God. You know I'm a sleepyhead at 5 o'clock in the morning. I can't wake myself up. God, would you wake me up in the morning? Become disciplined. Listen, reach your potential through the power of God. But here's something else. Notice what else he says. Through him, the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. Now, I want you to think about the sufferings of Christ. Listen, the sufferings of Jesus. Why did Jesus suffer? Jesus suffered so that you and I could come to that relationship with the Lord, that we could be saved, but not only saved, that we could become, begin this, this wonderful journey with Him. He suffered so other people could know Him, so other people could experience new life, so that other people could enjoy heaven, if you would. Paul says, listen, I, I'm pressing on. I, I want to reach my full potential, and part of my potential is suffering for others. Now, how do you do that? What do you mean by that? Well, let's use prayer. I, I'm, going to, I'm going to ask God to put somebody on my heart. We've already talked about this. Each, each one reach one. God, put, give me somebody that I can pray for this year. And Lord, I'm, I'm going to sacrifice every day. I'm going to get up and I'm going to pray for that person. And I'm going to pray that you prepare my heart to witness to them. And God, I'm going to pray that you open an opportunity for me to witness. And I'm going to pray that you give me the words to say. And Lord, I'm going to pray that that person's heart is prepared and they get saved this year. I'm going to sacrifice like Jesus did. I'm going to reach my full potential as a child of God by suffering, by sacrificing for the Lord Jesus. Would you dare consider that? 
Would you dare consider suffering for the Lord Jesus? You see, Paul said, I, I want to reach my fullest potential, in verse, verse 10, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection in my life and the fellowship of His suffering being conformed to His death. I'm going to die to myself, and I'm going to live for Almighty God. I'm going to reach my full potential as a child of God. Listen, our hymn book, I always like to use our hymn books. We, we have uh, all kind of hymns in here uh, talking about our faith and sharing our faith. Uh, I mean, real quick, three, beginning in 356, there's about 10 or 12 songs. I mean, we have a story to tell. We have a story to tell to the nations. Uh, rescue the perishing. Rescue the perishing. Care for the dying. We sing about it. Share His love. People need the Lord. Tell the good news. Tell the good news. Tell the good news. We sing about it all the time. We have heard the joyful sound. Uh, let others see Jesus in you. I'm not, send the light, there's no, send the light. Here's the one I wanted to get to though. Lord, lay some soul upon my heart. We sing that. We have been singing that. Let me see if it's got a date. Copyright 1940. Since 1940, we have been singing, Lord, lay some soul upon my heart and love that soul through me. And may I, oh, and, and may I bravely do my part to win that soul for thee, some soul for thee, some soul for thee. This is my earnest plea. Verse 3, to win that soul for thee alone will be my constant prayer, that when I've reached my heavenly home, I'll meet that dear one there. Some soul for thee. We sing about it all the time. Would we dare do that? Would we dare make that commitment? Listen, let me ask you this. Are you satisfied with where you're at in your walk with the Lord Jesus? Be honest. Because if you're satisfied with where you're at, that is a big red flag. Never be red satisfied. Never be, be content with your walk. Always want more of Jesus. Always want more. Never get to the place where you say, Well, I, I, I'm, I'm tickled to death with where I'm at. I couldn't, I couldn't advance another step. Never, never, never do that. So if we're not satisfied with where we're at, then how do we move forward? Well, let's forget the past. And by that I mean those sins that I've committed. Find forgiveness. Forgive yourself. Forget those victories. Don't live in the past. We can't live in the glories of the past. Can't do it. I'll never move forward if I'm constantly looking back. Focus on the future. Today, the events of life that God has put around me today. Today is a brand new day. A new day to ministry. Every day is a brand new day. God will use you every single day. Focus on, on the events of today and on my responsibility to God. I'm pressing on to the high calling. What is that high calling? To be transformed into the likeness of Jesus. It's my responsibility. Nobody else can do it for me. But I will give an account to God one day for what I did with that high calling. Did I, did I strive for it? Did I work towards it? Did I, did I seek to become more like Jesus every day? That's, that's the second thing. And then listen. Ask God to help you reach your fullest potential. Your fullest potential. By the power of the resurrection of Christ. Listen, Lord, I can't do it on my own. I've tried over and over and I keep failing. Lord, I need your help. But not only that, Lord, I'm willing. I'm willing to sacrifice. Lay some soul upon my heart today. We sing about it all the time. But God, with your strength, your power, I will pray for that person. I will prepare for the day you open that door to witness to that person. God, when that day comes, I will, with your strength and power, in my feeble, humble way, the very best that I can, I will tell them what Jesus has done for me. I will give them my testimony. That's all God asks us to do. Are you satisfied? I hope you're not. I pray that you're not. 
Do you need a do-over? You need a mulligan? You need to start fresh? Guess what? We get to every day. But this is a new year. Let's do 21 better than 2020. It is absolutely your choice. It's my choice. What will I do with my life? Forget the past. Live for today. Seek to reach my greatest potential with God's help. Will you make that commitment? I'm going to ask you to stand. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed.